Welcome to the Prince2 webinar, Explore Prince2 in the Project Management Kingdom. On behalf of Vedureka, I, Sadat, welcome every one of you into this webinar training session. I would request anyone who is not able to hear or has some audible problems, please do let me know well in advance if I'm not audible or are there any challenges that you are facing across. Well, it seems uh, no one had any troubles so hearing me, no audios, no videos issues. So let's start our webinar. Our webinar will be, uh, you know, divided into two parts. The first part will be uh, the webinar presentation, which is being be presided by me. Thereafter, we'll have 15, 20 minutes of the question and answer session. This is how we'll be dividing us at the next half an hour. So Prince 2. This is the agenda. We'll be talking about the history of Prince 2, this principle, the figures and numbers, the benefits, the themes of Prince 2, the processes, the qualification procedure, and the portfolio. So what is Prince 2? Prince 2 stands for Projects in Controlled Environment. It is the most world's most adapted project management framework with having over a million practitioners. Prince2 provides invaluable guidance which gives individuals and organizations the essentials of running a project. And the above the base, Prince2 is easy to learn and flexible enough to adapt to all type of projects. From the perspective of Prince2, let us see what does the definition of a project stands for. So, according to Prince2, a project is a temporary organization that is created for the purpose of delivering one or more business products according to an agreed business case. Here, the keyword temporary stands for that the project has a start date, middle date, and an end time. The second week keyword in, when, in this definition is organization. Here, the organization is not being referred as our companies or the MNCs. What organization it is referring over here in the definition of project is group of people which are brought together to deliver business product. The third important keyword in the definition of Prince2 is business case. And it is one of the principles which has been the deciding factors for principle of Prince2. By business case, it means that why this project is being done. What is the purpose? What is the benefit out of this project to be done? So that is how and that is why or that is in which way the definition of Prince2 has been projected. So what are the key benefits of Prince2? So the key benefits of a Prince of a Prince2 is it ensures projects are delivered to agreed quality within budgets and time scales. Quality in terms of Prince2 is a proven method. It's a globally recognized solution for total success of a project. Budget, it is well flexible enough, enough to fit in with any budget regardless of the project size. And when it says regardless of the project size, it means the same too. The time scale, whatever may be the desired targets, they are met on time and every time. And that is why it's one of the most seamless project management uh, frameworks that we have. The other benefits of Prince2 is, it is among the 
widely acceptable. It is proven best practices and governance. It provides explicit recognition of project responsibilities and roles. It has product focus, which clarifies what a project will deliver, why it will deliver, when it will deliver, by whom it will deliver, and lastly, for whom. It is also carefully designed to meet the needs of different levels in the management team, thus improving the communication and control. Prince2 is based on Managed by Exception Framework, which provides for the efficient and economic use of management time. Prince2 suggests that the management intervenes only when the individual or personal fails to meet the standards set by the themes. We will come to themes later on. It also ensures that participants focus on the viability of the project in relation to its business case objectives. Prince2 also provides thorough but economical structure of reports. There are only 26 reports in all which has to be utilized for the Prince2 project. Prince2 promotes consistency of project work and the ability to reuse project assets. Prince2 also provides the learning and continual improvement and it has the last but not the least a great professional community. So there may be the question that way arises why not to miss Prince2? Why a Prince2 should not be missed at this? The answer is the each and every project which the individual or the organization is working upon has lot riding on it. There has to be deadlines that have to be met. There has to be solutions that has to be found. That's where the Prince2 pitches in, comes in. In the 21st century businesses, governments and business both benefit from the true global best practices standards delivered through only Prince2. So the question comes in, can a framework which helps in bringing such a wide variety of benefits is can be afforded to be missed. Hope not. So let us take a quick look of the history of Princeton. So it goes back from 1975, where prompt to the project resource organization management and planning technique was formed by the organization known as SIMPAC Systems Limited. Thereafter, in 1989, Prince2 was published by the UK government agency. And since then, there have been major revisions way back in 2000. Earlier, uh, Prince, there was Prince and then it turned to Prince2. Thereafter, the organization, the ownership thought that to create a brand name, Prince2 name should not be revised thereafter. And hence, after whatever revisions has happened till date, Prince2 remained Prince2 only. It did not change to Prince3, Prince4, or Prince5. So, it's Prince2 being just for the sake of marketing gimmicks is being projected as one of the most widely acceptable or is it really acceptable framework in project management? So it was since first being developed in 1989, Prince2 has been successfully adopted by thousands of project managers around the world. Prince2 
has been widely accepted in over 150 countries in over 19 different languages in 2000 as per the estimates Prince 2 exam was taken after every three and a half minutes only there are over 1 million Prince 2 practitioners in over 150 countries spread between 19 different languages going by the figures you would estimate that Prince 2 has the value which is not constated to any given geographic location so most of the benefits for the Prince 2 they're shown on your screen have been already been talked about which is improving the communication improving the alignment improving the trust Influencing the organizational culture, uniting the teams and processes, and improve focus, cost control, and effectiveness. How, as an individual, the important question is these benefits which we talked about is mostly catering to an organization, but does it benefit to the organization as well or not? Does will it benefit me as an individual or not? Is the question probably you might have it while coming down the session. Will Prince to be really beneficial? Or is it just another certification program been marketed by the team? It's not that. The benefits of for an individual in terms of Prince to R of is recognized around the world, around the globe rather. Since you've seen it has been, op been implemented and used in over 150 countries. It improves your position. When an individual is certified as a Prince to practitioner, the organization, the client, the team, executives, Terminology that is common. The terminology which Press 2 is using is being commonly adapted from various organizations which have been following certain practices in project management. So there is no terminology in Prince 2 as such which is restricted to Prince 2 as such in totality. Clearly understand your role. One of the good things that I like about Prince2 framework is in Prince2 the role of each and every of the team member is defined and clearly defined. So there's a role of the project board, there's a role of the project manager which has been described, there's a role of the team manager, there are the role of the team members which has been clearly mentioned. But it has a more of a structured approach. It also helps an individual to structure their project given their conditions irrespective of the project size you're working, the scalicity, the complexity, the geographical location or whatever vertical or business unit you're working. It gives clear documented process of how to close your project. It improves your delivery by delivering the project well in time within the scope within the expected quality and with a clear business case intent it also tells you how to initiate a project or rather how to start your project so individual and from the organizational perspective Prince2 has the benefits Before we come to, uh, you know, Prince to it, you might have also heard the other certification program, which is PMP. 
you would have might of your professionals would be PMP certified too. So the point is, is Prince2 yet another project manager certification or it has its own value differentiation when it comes to other in comparison to other certification programs and I must say yes Prince2 is different than PMP it is not just another certification program so let us see how is Prince2 different than PMP so Prince2 is an economic stands for project in control and plan Whereas a Prince PMP is uh, the acronym stands for Project Management Professional. Prince 2 is a structured project management methodology which is endorsed by the UK government. PMP is a credential which is offered by PMI and the another most popular project management which is endorsed by US. PMP is a more of knowledge based approach to project management. Whereas Prince2 is a process based approach. In PMP, you have certain eligibility criteria before you can attempt or go for the PMP certification. In case of Prince2, you do not require any prior knowledge or experience in project management. In PMP, the each topic or knowledge area can be referred to in isolation of others. It's like a plug and play model. In Prince2, it is more of an integrated set of processes and themes, which are not isolated silos, which can be selectively applied. In Prince2, the principles are non-negotiable. So, when it comes to PMP, it focuses more of or only on the role of project manager whereas we have talked about it earlier too Prince2 defines the roles of everyone involved in the project maybe the project manager maybe it's the project board maybe the project support team maybe a team manager maybe a team role so everyone's role is well descriptive in Prince2 in PMP you have all the detailed techniques which are well documented and part of framework like the port of port technique, bottom up estimation, earned value management. Prince2 does not include this. So the specialist aspects and the detailed techniques are not elaborated in the Prince2 framework due to the generic nature of the Prince2 framework. So think of PMP as a body of knowledge which is like a book of cooking whereas Prince2 is a method like a recipe for a meal. I hope uh, with this you would be able to got it now that how Prince2 and PMP are different in their own sense. Let us see the three integrated key elements in Prince2. So Prince2 talks about seven processes. Prince2 talks about seven themes and Prince2 talk about seven principles. Let us see what are these principles, themes and processes. So Prince2 is based on seven key principles. I'm repeating Prince2 is based on seven key principles which are non-negotiable when I say non-negotiable it means none of the Prince2 principles can be taken as an exception into a Prince2 project you must have all the principles in your project so that in order to term your project as a Prince2 project These seven principles are supported by seven themes. The Prince2 project is then delivered through seven processes. So everything 
in Prince 2 is based on principles. They are the foundation of framework. The themes, on the other hand, are the aspects of project management that must be addressed consistently and throughout the project. Prince 2 processes describe who is responsible who is responsible for performing the themes at different points of project. But is there anything, uh, you know, that Prince does not cover? Yes. There are three things, three main key things, which a Prince who does not cover. Sir. Those are specialist aspects. So the industry or type specific work is not included in Prince 2. Prince 2 is entirely generic. So industry specific or type specific activities are excluded from Prince 2. Prince 2 also does not cover detailed techniques. So many proven planning and control techniques that can be used in support of Prince 2 theme are well documented elsewhere. So specific Prince 2 approach like product based planning and quality techniques are included but nothing besides that. Prince 2 also does not cover the leadership capability because from the Prince 2 perspective they think it is not possible to embed the leadership capability in a method. It's a too diverse topic as per Prince 2. You can have a quick look on this integrated element before we move forward to the next slide. Okay, I hope you've gone through it. Now, we'll have a quick look on what the seven themes of Prince Root talks about. The seven themes are business case, organization, quality, risk, planning, change, and progress. So themes in general are the aspects which the project manager should know to manage the project. So the first benefit of having themes is a business case. By business case, it means how to justify your project. So project manager should be able to justify why the project has been undertaken and throughout until and unless the project finishes, winds up, they should be able to justify and give the clear indications of why this project is needed. The second is organization. In organization, the roles and responsibilities are being described in order to bring accountability within the project members. The another aspect of theme is quality. It answers the question of how to ensure the project is fit for purpose. The risk. Who is doing what and when? So risk talk about the risk analysis and management are the key to any project successful delivery. Planning. The purpose of providing the base of the actual outcome. This is where it has been described and documented of which project team member should be doing what kind of activity, when they should be doing it, and how they should be doing it. The change team gives the clear definition of how a project configuration management, issue management, and change control need to be managed, need to handle the project in a more effective and efficient manner. And the last is the progress. The progress of the project.
the another integrative element of Prince 2 is the principles, the seven key principles, which is defining roles and responsibilities, managing by stages, managing by exception, learning from experience, tailoring, continued business justification, and focus on products. Let us have a look on each of those principles. Again, before that, I would like to repeat this. The seven key principles in Prince 2 are non-negotiable. They actually have to be implemented, utilized during the course of the project. There cannot be any negotiations on these. So in defining the roles and responsibilities, Prince 2 def has defined and agreed the roles and responsibilities within organizational structure that will engage three people. It will engage the business, it will engage the user, and it will engage the suppliers. The other principle is management by stages. It is a, a ball about planning monitoring and controlling your project on a stage by stage basis. In managed by exceptions, Prince 2 defines the tolerance limit for each project objective to establish the limits of the delegating authority. In learn from experience, it talks Prince 2 project team learns from the previous experiences where the lessons are sought, recorded and acted upon throughout the life cycle of the project. Tailoring is one of the USPs of Princeton which you are able not to find in many other project management certification program standards or framework. So tailoring to suit the project environment. So Prince 2 is tailored. Tailored to suit the project environment. Tailored to suit the project size. Tailored to suit the project complexity, importance, capability and risk. So what Prince 2 says is that based upon your environment of your project or your size or the complexity or the importance or the capability and risk, you can modify how you have to handle your project. The continued business justification needs to be answered at each and every step until and unless the project finish. The question is, is there a justifiable reason for starting the project that should remain consistent throughout its duration? Lastly, but not the least, the seventh principle is focus on products. So Prince 2 focuses on the definition and delivery of, of products, in particular the quality aspect of the product, the Prince 2 processes. Again, as there were seven themes, seven principles, so there are seven processes. The seven processes are starting up a project initiating a project, directing a project, controlling the state, managing the product delivery, managing the state boundaries and closing a project. So there are seven processes and as per Prince 2, the processes stand for the set of activities which are performed in a chronological order that creates the defined output using the defined inputs. So these Prince 2 processes are a structured set of activities which are designed to accomplish a specific objective. So the seven processes that is starting our project. 
So this is more of a pre-project process. So this process, it ensures that there's a business justification for the project, which also answers the question, do we have a viable project? In initiating a project, the project manager, manager builds the foundation, which is necessary to run the project. So the project plan, the detailed business case is written. The strategies for managing the risk, quality, etc. are also written in initiating a project. The third process is directing a project. This process is where the project board make decision whether to go ahead with this given project or not. So the project board throughout the project checks for the continued business justification. In the controlling the stage, the project manager does day-to-day -day work of the project which is performed at each stage following the initiation stage. So at the end, the project manager is decided at this stage whether to move ahead with the project or not. In managing the product delivery, this is where the product are actually produced. So the, it is perf this particular process or an activity is performed by the team manager by the work which is allocated by the project manager. In managing a stage boundary, the project manager reviews, reviews what? Reviews the project of this progress of the stage. And in closing a project, this is where the project is actually evaluated. The acceptance of the project product is obtained. I hope by now you would have an overview about the themes, the principles and the processes of Prince2. Now let us move ahead and understand the qualifications in the exams which happens to be under Prince2. So the first stage of a Prince 2 qualification is the Prince 2 foundation exam. Benefit of this core qualification is simple. It confirms that the individual has sufficient knowledge and understanding of the Prince 2 method to be able to work effectively with or as a member of the project management team with an environment environment which is supporting Prince 2. So in a Prince 2 foundation exam, it's a multiple choice examination questions with 75 questions per paper in which the five questions are on a trial basis. So in summary, you need to attempt or you need to have 50% of the right answers of the remaining 70 questions. It's a closed post exam. And the important thing, it is the prerequisite for attempting the second level of Prince 2 exam, which is the practitioner qualification. Let's have a glance look on the practitioner qualification too. So the purpose of the practitioner qualification is to confirm whether the candidate has achieved sufficient understanding of how to apply and tailor at the same time Prince2 in a scenario based situation. So a successful Prince2 practitioner candidate should be able to start applying the method of to a real project but may not be sufficiently skilled to do this appropriately for all situations. The Prince 2 practitioner exam, on the other hand, is a multiple choice examination question. It has eight questions. And in each of these eight questions, you have 10 questions per item, each carrying worth one marks. So in totality, the exam is of 80 marks, in which 
44 marks or 55% need to be attempt getting so that you are certified as a principal practitioner. It's a two and a half hours duration exam with no additional reading time also. It's an open book but there's a cash to it. The book which is acceptable in the Prince 2 practitioner exam is the official Prince 2 manual only. The Prince 2 practitioner certification is valid for five years. Post that you have to appear for a registered practitioner exam which is again on the same pattern of the practitioner exam but of one hour duration only. If maybe at the end of the day for each one out there any certification exam would boil down to what are the financial benefits for me as an individual in terms of my career growth in terms of career aspect the answer is it was identified from one of the reports published in payscale.com that the demand for prisoner registration data of senior project management profile the pay bracket is between $92,000 per annum to close to $150,000 per annum. People who are Prince2 certified the project managers has the pay bracket of at least $42,000 which ranges goes to one lakh dollars over one lakh in fact. So we have seen that Prince2 is not from the numbers figures interesting to go for it for an individual benefit or an organizational benefit but in terms of the careers in the pay brackets also it is equally beneficial for an individual. So how would Eduraker as an organization would help you out in certifying, getting certified for Prince to practitioner? So there is an upcoming bash of Eduraker on July 11th, which will be divided into four week duration, which is happening only on Saturdays and Sundays, which will be providing 32 hours of online classes with four make this and we are aggregated trainers from people search with having over 15 years of global experience in project management. So the contact details you know if you want to rush to and book it and get the you know discount which I would see us on the screens until valid till July 4 is of 20 percent. Reach to the nearest of your Edurekas people and go and book the exams, go and book the certifications. The details is there on your screens. The, so I hope uh, you know you would have noted down the numbers, contact details, whom to get in touch with. How would be our Prince 2 session conducted through Edureka different than the organizations? So Edureka have their own live online classes. They have the recordings recorded in your LMS account. So once you, you know, get creates an account on Edureka of your website, each of the training sessions that you attend, you have the recorded sessions over there available 24 cross 7. By 24 cross 7, you also have the class support, post class support. You have a lot of module wise questions to break down. You might have certain project works to be done. And at the end of the session in the exam, you'll get the certification in hand. How the course structure will be divided for the Prince 2? We'll be having quite of six modules. The first we'll be talking about the integrated elements, the second we'll talk about principles, then theme, then processes, they have to tailoring at the end 
will do a live Princeton practitioner case study to be solved on the set guidelines set by the Prince 2 body. With this, I have done with my webinar. I would request now to each one of you to please drop in your question so that they can be answered in this session. You may go ahead and start asking your questions on the question dialog box which is available to each one of you. Do you have any questions for me regarding Prince 2? If you have, I would request each one of you to please post your question. The first question which you got from is from Mr. Hari. His question is, do you provide classroom training? Um, Hari, we do not, the editor does not provide the classroom training. However, the experience in the online batches are no lesser than the classroom batches. The benefit of doing from Edureka is you have three to four hours of the session on each day. So the one which is starting on the 11th of July, you will have three to four hours in the morning, thereafter on Sunday, three, four hours. The rest of the day you have for yourself, for your family and for your personal. So the Prince 2 will be divided over a period of one month and just four hours of session each day. I hope I answered your question. The next question is from Mr. Baswati. The question is that each module has exams separately. When I say modules, yes, the Prince to Foundation has a different exam and Prince to Practitioner has a different exam. So Prince to as a whole in terms of examination is divided into two modules, the Prince to Foundation and Prince to Practitioner. Each have their own exam, which again would be helped, supported through Edureka to you. I hope I answered your question, Mr. Baswati. The next question is from Mr. Durgesh. How Prince do better than from other project management certifications? I would not say, and I never said that, or I would rather never ever say that, that one certification is better than the other certification. It's basically on the value which you are generating out of each of the certification. So doing the Prince 2 certification has its own benefits. Doing the PMP certification has their own benefit. Doing any other certifications like ITL has its own benefits. The individual has to see whether those benefits are beneficial to them or not in some way or the other. I hope I answered your question, Mr. Dugesh. If you still have, please drop in your question. The next question is from Mr. Bhagava. For existing PMP credential holder, can the Prince to Foundation exam be waived off? Uh, yes, uh, they have come out with something where the Prince to Foundation exam might be waived off. But however, uh, to get an understanding of Prince 2, it is suggested to at least go across the Prince to Foundation module as well. The next question is from Mr. Hari. What is the price and how can I avail 20% discount you have mentioned? I would suggest Mr. Hari that please contact the number which is available on your screen. You need to talk to those Edureka box. They would help you how, how would you avail the 20% discount. And since it is valid till July 4th only, so you have another three days to avail the discount. 
the other question we have from the other participant, Mr. Baswati. The question is, does this certification I can do through online completely? The answer is, through Edureka, yes, the certification can be done online completely because Edureka provides end-to-end -end support right from the word go, from the training to the postcard support and to the exams as well. The other question is from Mr. Amar. The question is, is the exam proctored or unproctored? Practitioner, how can how we can refer the manual? The question to it is the exams if they are online are proctored. So you would be continuously being monitored for the exam that you're taking. So they would be aware what are you looking at, what you're not looking at it. So you may refer to the practitioner book on an online or an offline basis. I hope I answered your question well, Mr. Ahmed. The other question is Mr. Brambaswati, how long the whole course takes usually? Usually the word is totally generic. It actually, I would rather say depends. For example, if you're going through the Edureka teaching methodology, it will take you one month over the period of one month to get yourself Prince to practitioner certified professional. I hope I answered your question as per your expectation, Mr. Baswati. Do you have any other questions for me? If yes, please go ahead. Do we have any other questions from any of the participants? If yes, please feel free to raise or ask your query. The question from Mr. Arun is, what would be the cost of the examination? Arun, for that I would request you to contact the Edureka SPOC on the contact details mentioned on your screens. They would help you out for the cost of the examination. Do we have any other questions from any of the participants? If yes, please feel free to answer, to get your questions answered. I'll give a minute more before we wind up this session. It's okay. I think um, there aren't any other questions coming from any of the participants. So with this, we will be finishing our webinar for the Prince 2. I hope you enjoyed the session. Please do give in your feedback. Also, the people who are interested in attending the upcoming Prince Troop training session would request you to avail the 20% discount if you book it before July 4th. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, each of your participants, for coming down for this webinar. Have a great day. Goodbye.